friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Lawn Fawn Carrot Bout You and all the Speech Bubbles stamp sets. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. And I'm going to be coloring with my Copics to match some pattern paper from the brand new Rainbow Ever After paper pad. So I'm going to tear off the sheet that I'll use as my color inspiration and tuck that under my cardstock panel. So I'm starting with my bunny and I wanted it to be a white bunny. So I'm just going to use two shades to do some very simple coloring. I'm actually going to do very simple coloring for most of my images today because I want to match that pale pastel pattern paper. So for the bunny, I used E000 and E40 and just let that fade into the white cardstock for the highlight. I'll also throw a little E40 on the centers of the wagon wheels and I'm going to outline the speech bubble with the E40 just to give it a bit more definition. Next, I'm going to pull in the lighter pink of the pattern paper with R11 and R20. I'll color the insides of my bunny's ears, give him some rosy cheeks, and fill in his nose. And then I'm also going to do the first tulip in that little line of tulips. And then I'm going to move on to the more coral pink, and I'll keep the R20 and add the R22 for that for the next tulip. Then I'm going to move on to the orange. I went with YR01 and YR02 for that. I'm going to skip over the yellow for now and go straight to the green. The closest I could get to that kind of sage green in the pattern paper was YG41 and YG45. And I'm going to use those two shades to color in all of the leaves. Then I'm going to move on to that kind of dusty blue green. I use BG53 and BG57. Then the next blue, I'm going to use B41 and B45. That B45 is quite dark, but the B41 blends it out quite nicely. Then for the blue violet, I used BV02 and BV04. And for the violet, I used V12 and V15. I'm going to use that for the single tulip. And then I'm going to go back to the yellows and I'm going to do my wagon in those shades. And I'm going to use Y000, Y02, and Y06 to start. But I ended up deciding that this just didn't have enough contrast on it for me. I know I was going with a softer contrast to match the pattern paper, but because it's a larger image, it just needed a bit more definition at the edges. So I did bring in the Y08 and then just blended back in the reverse. For the wheels, I wanted to keep things in the pastel tones. So I used C1 and C3 to keep it really nice and light. But I did go back and add a little extra of that C3 just to darken it up. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. Next, I'm going to take another piece of that Spectrum Noir cardstock and I am going to die cut the Lawn Fawn Secret Garden window out of the center of that. So I'm actually taking the outer part of the die first and using that to help me add the center part right where I want it so I can kind of line things up and see exactly where I want to position that. And then I will remove the outer part of that die and run this through my die cutting machine. So then I'm going to peel off the die carefully. I'm going to leave the center part intact for now because I think it's easier to color without having to add another piece of cardstock underneath. That way if I go over the edges a little bit, it's not going to get all over my work surface. So I'm just going to go back to the Copic colors that I had used previously, starting with all of the greenery. So I'm using that YG41 and YG45 again. I'm starting with the YG45 and coloring in any of the stems, sometimes adding a little bit to the leaves as well, just depending on where they're placed. It's mainly the things that are really close to the edge where I'm adding that darkest shade. 
And so I'm just working my way around the panel and um, choosing to do all of the greenery. I'm gonna do it all in this same green combo, mainly because I didn't have another green combo that really matched the tone of that pattern paper well. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and do all of them in the same shades. Then I'll bring in that YG41 and start to blend that out. I did realize that I was going to need a third shade on some of the leaves just because there was so much surface area to cover that the two markers on their own wouldn't really cover it while still keeping some dimension there. So I will bring in a third shade in just a minute but I'm just working my way around and making sure to catch the edge of that YG45 and kind of pull it out into this mid-tone to try to eliminate any harsh lines. And then I brought in G00 at first, but it was a little bit too blue-toned, so I switched it out for the G quadruple zero, which is much paler and blended nicely with that YG41. It's also going to keep those leaves really nice and pale, which is what I wanted because I wanted the focus to be on all of the images that we colored, but I just wanted to have a little bit of embellishment around, you know, kind of framing in the scene that I'm going to be creating. And so going just a little bit paler by adding in this lighter shade, I think is gonna just enhance the central focus on those images. Then I'm gonna bring in all of the pinks that I use. So this is a combination of both the lighter pink and the darker, more coral pink. And I'm gonna do the hearts with R11, R20, and R22. Again, that's gonna keep the end that's towards the images really soft and light. I brought back in those violet tones with V01 and V04. And I just selected two of these kind of floral or berry images that were kind of across from each other diagonally, just to bring that color around the scene a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring in my blues, the pure blues. I'm using B41 and B45. Again, just being sparing with that B45 because it is quite dark but that B41 really tones it down when you blend out with that. So again, I just chose two that were kind of across from each other diagonally. And then I'm also gonna bring in the blue violets with the BV02 and the BV04. There's just one of those little berry floral things left, so I just did one with that combo. And then I'm going to take the center part out so you can see what that looks like. I'm just carefully popping that out, making sure not to tear anything, just gently removing that. And then from that center, I'm going to take the additional flower dies and trim that out. I need three of those. So um, you can see that I have those kind of on my black cardstock there just so I can see where to color. And I'm gonna bring back in my orange shades, the YR01 and YR02. And I just did like half of the flower in one and the other half in the other shade, um, just to kind of have a mix of the two tones on there, but there's not really a light source for these since they're more rounded. And then for the centers of those flowers, I'm gonna bring back in the yellows. And I just used the Y02 and the Y06. And again, I just added a little bit of the Y06 first and then blended out with the Y02. These were really hard to hold onto the centers. I had to use my fingernail to kind of hold them in place, but you could also maybe use a bit of post-it tape or some removable adhesive. Then I'm going to trim down that original piece of pattern paper with the large stitch rectangle stackables. I'm just taping that into place and then I'm also going to die cut the outer piece of the secret garden window. And again, I'm just taping that into place so it doesn't shift because I had it lined up just where I wanted it. So once I run that through, it's going to give me this center piece which I can save and use for another project. 
but for today I'm just going to be using the outer piece that has the window cut out of it. So now that I have the two parts of my secret garden window, I can glue them together. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the back of the pattern paper and then line that up carefully over the back piece so that I have the same amount of white cardstock showing through all around. And then I'll smooth that pattern paper into position. Then I'm going to grab those extra little flowers and some EK Success reverse tweezers because these pieces are quite small. And then I can add some liquid glue to the backs of those and glue them right over top of the ones that I left with the white cardstock there because they weren't a full flower. And I'll take one of the centers and glue that in and um, just go around until I've got all three of those adhered. So they all fit perfectly, but I just have to kind of turn and twist them a little bit to make sure that they're lined up as they should be. And thankfully there's at least a little bit of white cardstock kind of hanging through the back so that the centers have something to adhere to so they don't just fall right through. This one stayed together, so I just took it as a whole and glued that one into place at the top. So I can set this panel aside for now, and then I'm gonna go back to that Rainbow Ever After pattern paper pad and choose another print that has this gorgeous ombre that is like a sunset. I trimmed that down into two pieces, and I'm gonna use the grass from the mushroom border to trim down the bottom piece to create the ground. I chose the mushroom border because the grass is on a smaller scale and I thought for our smaller images that it would look nicer. So now I'm gonna pop a piece of Moonstone cardstock in my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment. I'm using Forget Me Not ink and doing the one that says spring is on its way. So I'm gonna stamp that down twice to make sure it is nice and bold. And then I can set that aside and I'll pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Sticky Note cardstock from Lawn Fawn for that. I scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I'm stamping on the inside using Sunflower ink. And because it isn't super dark, I did have to stamp this down a whole bunch of times because this ink dries back a bit. So I just wanna make sure that it's going to be legible. And I did have to add just a tiny extra ink to the sentiment. Then I took one of the speech bubbles from all the speech bubbles and made sure it would be a good fit. And then I'm going to stamp that down into place right around that sentiment, which says, I care it, believe it, which I think is really cute. So I'm ready to adhere my grass to my sky and I started to add some liquid glue and then realized that I wanted to pop it up with some foam tape because it is such a soft blend. I just was afraid that the grass wouldn't really stand out on its own, but giving it a bit of dimension creates a tiny bit of a shadow, which will help it stand out a little bit more. So instead I added some foam tape to the back of that, but that is going to change the design that I already had for the frame. So you'll see me have to fix that in just a second because it wasn't gonna fit over top anymore. So I added that a little bit higher up because I wanted to make sure to have a little bit of that pink in the sky. And um, now I'm just kind of trying to gauge where I'm going to have to remove the foam tape that I've already added to the back of that frame because it's not gonna fit over top of the popped up grass. So I'm having to kind of tear that up and snip it off with my Cutter B Teflon coated scissors into an approximate size that will fit over that grass, which is popped up. So it will fit together just fine. It just required a little bit of card surgery, but it's all good. So now that I have that done and I checked to make sure that it would fit, I'm gonna peel off the rest of those release papers 
and then I'm going to line this up over that background piece and once I'm sure that I have it in position, like I said, I wanted a little bit of that pink showing through in the sky, then I can pop that down into place and kind of peel it back up off my desk and I'm gonna add some liquid glue to the back of the sky and then I will glue that to the front of my card. So I'm just going to line that up and try to get that centered and I didn't quite get it on the first go so I did have to peel it off just a little bit so that I was able to adjust the positioning. It was only slightly off so I was able to fix that. And now I can bring in my images. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of glue to the back of the wagon and then I'm going to place my tulips inside so that the leaves are poking out. So it looks like that wagon is nice and full with some flowers for sale maybe. And then I'll add a little bit of foam tape to the back of that. And originally I was going to have it over top of the grass, but I decided I liked the look of it kind of nestled into the grass a little bit better. That also helped create a little bit of separation between the grass and the sky. And then I'm going to have my bunny sitting down in there. Um, I wasn't able to squeeze him back down in there though because the foam tape went up a little bit too high, so I'm going to have to trim off the bottom of his legs once I figure out exactly where I want him to go. And I decided to glue him flat to the card just so it would look like the flowers were a little bit more in front of him and just added a bit more dimension to the scene. So I'm adding my bunny and then he's gonna be holding one of the tulips. And again, I just had to snip off a tiny bit from the bottom so that I could tuck it in to the length that I wanted. And then I'm just going to adjust that so you can see his hand and it looks like he's holding on to that. Then I'll take that speech bubble and I've added foam tape to the back of that as well. So I'll tuck it under some of the hanging flowers and pop that down into place. I've also trimmed down my sentiment with one of the everyday sentiment banners. So I'm just figuring out the placement. I thought it might be nice to take up some of the space in the grass but I decided I didn't really like the look of that because the flowers were covering up too much of the sentiment. So I'm gonna glue it down at the bottom of the scene instead, uh, right under those little flowers that are coming out of the white frame. So I'm just holding that down into place until the glue dries and then I felt like it was missing something. So I stamped and colored two of the tiny butterflies from Butterfly Kisses. And I did those in the two pink tones, the lighter pink and then the more coral pink. So I popped one up on foam tape to go right above the tulips. And then the other one I'm going to place down in the grass, again, to just break up a little bit of that solid color. And then I decided to add a few sparkling clear sequins. So I just chose a couple different sizes. I'm doing three at the top left corner and then two down at the bottom right corner. I'll let those dry for maybe a minute so that glue has time to adhere. And then I'm going to fill the centers with some stardust stickles just to give it a bit of extra shine and sparkle. I also decided to add a little bit of the stickles to each of the tulips, including the one that the bunny is holding and to the butterfly's wings. And that is going to finish up this card, so I will lift it up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. I will also have another card featuring these adorable stamp sets and the sweet little carrot cards on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I used will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. 
Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.